This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by some of the folks behind Rainbow Time, which is premiering here at South by Southwest. Is this okay? So, yeah, today. Uh, we're getting it while it's nice and hot. Um, so we got Linus Phillips on the right and Tim Sharp on the left. Yes. You got that right? Going. Yes. Um, yes, I'm Tim Sharp. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> them, yeah, for for the viewers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I am on the left. Stage, I never understood the stage left, stage right. So it's I'm, right. I'm Linus. Hello. <laughs> I'm Tim. Um, Hello. So, I guess the first part I should start with is you guys play brothers in the movie. Um, obviously, the chemistry between you two is a very significant part of the movie. What did you guys do to sort of prepare for that? Was there brotherly bonding or anything else to get rid of? Oh, you don't even know what you're asking. We're going to get so blue during this interview. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> we, yeah. no, we, we talked about relationship stuff, we, sexual things. We well, Our first meeting, we just like dove in deep. Yeah. And we got very honest. Yeah. Um, with, with the movie, it feels like that's probably an appropriate way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to talk about like, what are, you, what are your feelings on this, th that this real stuff in the script, so, yeah. Yeah, it was very quick, like a quick, I felt like immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Uh, well, I loved you because I had someone in my movie. And yeah, right. And <laughs> said yes. Right. And yeah, I knew you'd be great. But then after and, meeting him, it was an immediate, I thought it was an immediate connection. Yeah. I felt completely 100% comfortable to be me. And I feel like you felt the same way. To be myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I knew Tim I would be, I'd, I'd seen his work, and I just knew he'd be really funny, but like also really grounded and realistic, and that's super important to me. So that's sort of an interesting and, and thing And we, we talked about that aesthetic, too. Yeah. yeah. The, the notion of like, I mean, I guess when you get to a certain level of acting, like, it gets to be a shades of gray kind of thing in terms of like S &M the and right stuff person like that. and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, Fifty Shades of Grey. In fact, uh, sequel to that movie, we're here. Um, but how, like, how do you sort of determine that? Did you just zero in on him like very early on and like this is instantly it? I don't really need to see anyone else. I feel a chemistry here. Was it? Is it challenging to sort of? figure out exactly who that person is to sort of bounce off. I mean, I, w I didn't know for a long time. And then, uh, I mean, I was a super fan of you and like I w was interested in him, but I was like, I don't know him. And so, but then I was talking to Melanie and she was like, what about Tim Sharp? And I was like, yeah, he was like, yeah, I've already, I don't, but he's do on you, the list already. I was like, do you know him? <laughs> and then she was like, yeah, we auditioned together for something. And then I was like, oh, done. I was like, done, yeah, let's, yeah. Yeah. I was like, so we just sent an offer to him, and That's yeah. That's very spectacular. <laughs> uh, one of the key elements of the movie is Linus's character has, I don't know what you would call him, some disabilities of some sort. What exactly that is, I guess it's sort of up for some debate. Mm -hmm. um, what was the sort of prep like for that? Did you sort of hang out with people with some sort of disabilities and for you Tim did you do any sort of research in interacting with that or had you had previous experience doing that? Well yeah um, my little I have two little twin brothers and one of them uh, has he's a little bit uh, developmentally challenged and um, so I I mean I'm very much older than him but I grew how old is he? He's he, like I'm old <laughs> yeah. and he's well now him and his uh, Nick and Alex are both uh, 21, I think, maybe 22. But like, I grew up, I, I was there when they were born, and, and him, uh, God, they're gonna hate that I'm talking about, <laughs> the talking about it. Bottom line is, you had some sort of, yeah, I had experience with that, with that experience. and it was, it wasn't like a, a, a complete foreign <laughs> uh, uh, situation for me, I suppose, yeah. And then you worked with actual. Yeah, I, I've um, babysat lots of kids who have, you know, learning delayed issues, developmentally delayed um, was that, learning issues, like a like, wide spectrum. So it's hard to kind of well, I mean, label it. But is, that, it's is just, that sort of a scary thing? Because, I mean, obviously it's something that you care deeply about, that you're trying to, oh. I don't know, emulate and try and recreate. And you don't want to do it in such a manner where it becomes yeah. cliched I mean, or, or disrespectful. Disrespectful yeah. or whatever. I mean, yeah. obviously the one that pops to mind is... Uh, Tropic Thunder, where uh, 
Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. talks about, you know, if you want to win the Academy Award or whatever, you have to go full in. But right. at the end of the day, you want to do it respectfully. Was that sort of difficult for you to find, like, the right mix of, like, this I, feels like... I was worried about it up until, like, you know, a couple months before shooting. Um, and I, at a certain point, you just have to say, screw it. And, like, I'm... I'm I'm doing my best. I mean, because otherwise I would have never made it. But yeah, I'm still worried, and I hope that the the like some people, especially the parents of kids that I've worked with, won't think I'm doing anything disrespectful because they're they're they've had such a meaningful part of my life. But you know, yeah, I'm just basically trying to show. I mean, Shanzi also has nothing to do with any of the kids in a direct way. He's so much more perverted and <laughs> right. And it's insane. not necessarily a true representation. Yeah, of COVID. but it's kind of like about like seeing how, the effect that having a kid like that um, and how that um, the effect that it has on that family, um, the way that feels. I tried to represent that truthfully, but not the actual events or anything. So I just you know it's like these. You know, these people are human, too, and you have to show them as flawed characters like any real person. Ooh, perfect timing. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, we got food coming here. Believe me, this is not <laughs> the first time I've had people eat on camera. It's perfect. Matthew Willard took that, that looks great. many Thank years you. ago. <laughs> um, yeah. In terms of sort of that growth of the characters, like, everybody, I mean, obviously the relationship between you guys that's been fractured because of the disability is a core element of the movie, but everyone has much more sort of complicated journeys to go on. How do you sort of like balance giving each one of those sort of aspects its proper attention? I mean, obviously you could have just made this about your relationship, a la something like Rain Man or something like that. But like your girlfriend, played by Melanie Lewinsky, is a huge part of the movie, both for both of you, honestly. And then um, the father, Tobin Bell, is an important element as well. I mean, there's a lot going on in terms of the character development. How do you sort of balance that both as, you know, writer, director and actors, I guess? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, it always seemed more interesting to have it like a like a three way scenario, like a three hander type of situation. Not a real three way, but um, it's you a good know, way you should put that as a tagline. Yeah, a sort of three way. A real three way type situation. Yeah, yeah, uh, because I mean that's really interesting. The relationship and how like Shanzi being inserted into their relationship all of a sudden when he has to move in really brings up stuff about that they need to deal with um, that they've smothered uh, during the course of their, you know, seeing each other. So, I mean, that stuff is really interesting to me. Like, what I love about movies is just where these situations happen, like, it, like you're kind of avoiding this thing that you need to learn or explore, and but then outside situations just force you into talking about it or dealing with stuff. Yeah, and as an actor, a lot of the... A lot of the stuff that my character's going through, um, Linus was sort of more or less not, I mean, not as specific to the story, but like it has been things that he's gone through. That's, you know, why he wrote about it. And I would just ask him <laughs> where certain things came from. Like, what is that about? You know what I mean? And then I would just uh, run it through my own filter uh, or my own like perspective. And that would. Uh, uh, that would influence my choices as an actor on it. I mean, yeah, the relationship stuff to me is as important and rich as the brothers because, um, I mean, I feel like I'm all the characters. Like, I, I can be like Melanie's character who's too critical. I mean, I'm like that at times where I'm just like, I'm a little bit more like the female character in some ways where I will just want to talk to death a, a thing out with yeah. my girlfriend yeah. and you know I don't know so but I've also been like the typical guy who sure. just doesn't want to deal with that stuff uh, in terms of like uh, one of the more one of the things I actually like was the relationship between both of your characters and Tobin Bell as your father I mean obviously you've worked with him before that probably helped develop a certain chemistry um, but was it like sort of developing that family union and sort of like really sort of creating a cohesive package of all these flaws as a family. Because he is an important part of it. Yeah, of yeah setting, he did an amazing setting job. Setting sort of a tone for what occurred later. Yeah, he did an amazing job. I don't know, we all just got along like so well right away. and we, I mean, that stuff was just sort of, we didn't think about that creating the bond between the three of us as much because like he doesn't interact with the dad very much actually no. so it's more like me and Tobin but that relationship echoes the me and 
the totally. and Todd that relationship. So I don't know, but yeah, Tobin was great, and he like saved several scenes. Um, you know, the stuff where me and him have this emotional moment at the end. Like he had great suggestions. Yeah. So he really came like all in as a collaborator and actor. And, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's a really fascinating sort of. I mean, as someone who's I've become so associated with like Jigsaw. Yeah. It's like it's so <laughs> interesting to see him very sort of sweet, sweet and affectionate, yeah. especially like the last scene where you guys are like, or one of the last scenes we're making the movie with him. Like it's such a sort of profoundly sweet scene. And yeah. It's it's such a different perspective. Um, yeah, I just, I just enjoy Yeah. Um, Tobin's great. He's like a real actor. Yeah, what about yeah. uh, working with Melanie? Obviously, I mean, she, uh, she's been on the MacGuffin several times. She's before. right we're off here, camera. Here, I'm going to talk about. Yeah, she's, she's, she's waving from a side. Um, she, but we're, we're huge fans of her here. Um, yeah, <laughs> we already already harassed Steve Zissa, so maybe there's some dirt you're not hearing about there. But um, what was it like working with you? Obviously, we're huge fans of her. What is it like from your guys' perspective getting? That I, I I can't I can't compliment Melanie enough. I uh, she is one of the most present actors I've ever worked with and like it makes my job super easy with her and she's one of the few women actresses that I've noticed other females who watch her unanimously seem to love her which is unheard of there's always like somebody you know some girl be like I don't know they're just, they love her. Everyone loves Melanie Linsky, and there's a reason because she is awesome. Maybe that means she needs to go do Jigsaw, you know, and Saw 8 after this and really just yeah, twist everyone. Yeah, she should play a horrible it. killer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that'd be I so good. I've done that before, technically. Oh. Maybe a dogfighter character. Interesting. Yeah, that's a callback from earlier Yeah, <laughs> today. they won't work on this thing. But I'm sure they'll search it out now that you've said it. Yeah, it's a yeah. good film I'm writing called Dogfighter. Yeah. Uh, no, we're trying to think of the worst movie ever. <laughs> like a It'd character be a just... unpleasant one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guy just fighting dogs the whole time. Um, no, but seriously, yeah. I was so thankful that Melanie agreed to do it. And, yeah, I mean, she's... She really reminded me about listening in scenes and did not worry about all the other shit that we had to shoot that night or whatever. And you just have... None of it's going to work as well if you don't just, like, stop and fucking breathe and just listen and be present. Yeah. So I've been seeing stuff about this movie on Facebook for I don't I don't even know how long. It's probably been a year, year plus at this point. What is it like to finally get here to South by Southwest, have the finished product? As everybody, you know, I mean, I, I imagine it's quite a feeling of accomplishment. Hell yeah, it feels amazing. <laughs> I'm so yeah. proud of I'm so proud of you, man. It's I, I'm so proud of all of us. This is a it's a great movie, <laughs> and I'll say it. Which raises a good point. For those sad folks who are not at Austin to watch the film, uh, what is sort of any any word on where it might appear next or any place that they might be able to find out more information I mean, not, nothing solidified yet, but hopefully we'll play some other festivals and hopefully we'll get picked up. So Is there a website or anything there. that people should check out? I mean, there's a Twitter Facebook page. There's Facebook a Facebook page, page yeah, so... Okay. Search on check Facebook. out the Facebook page. Yeah, give you there's the a Twitter number. handle to Rainbow Time Film. So yeah, perfect. Uh, anything else you guys are working on that you want people to pay attention to, or anywhere else to keep uh, up to date with you guys when sure. you announce it? Um, I'm on a TV show called Blunt Talk on Stars right now. It's we're shooting our second season right now. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the second season in probably September, or October, or something like that. Uh, I'm just, just writing, just writing new, oh, uh, trying to get another movie together as soon as I can. Um, one thing is about this guy who's trying to start his own cult or, or religion, depending on who he's talked to. Um, and he only has one member. And so it's kind of, it's kind of like a buddy thing story. Um, yeah, it's called Ron and Jeremy. Oh, interesting. I love it. No, just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. That's my I, joke title. I'll do, I I'll love it. Like Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm get sure it. I'll see you some get stuff it. about that on Facebook because you're really good about <laughs> updating about this stuff. But uh, thank we'll you see. so much, Tim Linus, for uh, thank you. participating. I can't wait to see what 
the film goes on to do, and I can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Don't even try to buy the sunset. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels